today we're just going to do a makeup of the day getting ready tutorial so as you can see my face is obviously full of breakout not ideal so I'm just going to start with a bit of primer and um, to go over my face neat little trick that I'm trying out at the moment is putting some eyeshadow primer on my nose area which is where I'm getting the most oily uh, coverage and um, I'm getting lots of break like kind of breakouts there my pores are really big and my makeup tends to move in that area so I'm just going to pop a little bit just on my nose and obviously I'm using Urban Decay's eyeshadow primer here in the color Eden which is my go-to primer and I'm literally patting this in now you can use a beauty blender you can use a brush you can use whatever you want but the the rule here is not to rub it in it's to pat it in and you should do this first before you put any other primer on before you put your foundation on absolutely anything because this is going to create a really good foundation for the rest of your makeup and obviously by patting it into the surface you're really filling any large pores that you might have I'm just going around the edges of my nose as well because I get red circles there just pat that in and I literally used one sweep of the side of the applicator wand and it's given me a decent coverage for my nose area go I'm finding um it quite my skin quite challenging at the moment um I've been using like a really good moisturizer which is the Elizabeth Arden eight hour cream but the problem that I'm having with it is that because it's such an oily and greasy um makeup a uh, moisturizer sorry that I'm actually finding it really difficult to then not get any further breakouts um just where I haven't put the uh, eyeshadow primer. I'm going to use the Pure Correcting Primer, P-U-R. It's from Marks and Spencer's, I believe. It's called Prep and Perfect. And this actually feels really gorgeous. And it feels really weird to not then put that on your nose. So it's just to work around the rest of your face. where I put that coverage on my nose it's just covering up some of my drier parts of my complexion so I've now prepped the skin and I'm going to use the Amazonian clay 12 hour full coverage foundation which I tried for the first time yesterday on one of my other videos and um, I quite liked how it felt but I did end up with a lot of my product moving throughout the day. Now, I don't know if that's because I'm using a different moisturiser. So, I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt. And I'm going to use it again today. It actually gives quite a good coverage. Now, I literally use a, a glob jewel um, that's not very big, less than the size of a 5p. And I'm using the brush that they provided as part of the Man Eater set to apply it. I'm just using that stippling motion again to cover as much of the face with limited product. Obviously, don't throw your makeup brush on the floor. I'm 
And what I really noticed with this product is the colour is quite fair, but I can feel it kind of covering in a in a in a blanket kind of flawless effect way. So although I've got really lumpy red skin at the moment, it is doing you know a decent job of neutralising all those types of issues to give an overall kind of polished look. So we've got a decent base now to start with. I'm just going to go in and cover up any of the blemishes with this Helen E Cover Concealer Pot. This is in 01, which is the palest shade. And it's quite a thick concealer, which I find works better um, with basically the different skin types that I have. This one, anything wetter tends to move quite quickly, so I'm just going to... Dab that on any red raised areas on my skin. I think sometimes you can get concealer that's in such a pale shade that you can really see it on your skin. But it works really well with this foundation because I've obviously got quite pale skin and... It can be, I do get dark circles, and my skin, particularly around my eyes, almost gives the impression of being see-through. So it can be quite hard to find something that's, that's pale, but is able to blend in. So I've managed to get a foundation now that is very good at matching my skin colour. Uh, probably never find a concealer that looks lighter than it, but this blends in particularly well with the whole rest of the face. So I don't think I'm going to get much better than that in terms of a concealer. So I'm just going to go ahead and pat some powder on. Ooh, I thought I was going to sneeze there. So I'm just going to use uh, the Rimmel Stay Matte Powder, which I'm finding is a... Uh, quite useful for just setting the makeup. So I'm using a Sephora um, little beauty sponge to just apply this and I'm literally patting this on. And this is a great technique, particularly on the nose area, which can be a problem area and under the eyes for most of us where makeup moves and it kind of, kind of gets oily and travels around the face during the day. This, patting this on, will basically push that product into your skin. It's not going to move it around, it's not going to force it around the face, it's just going to push it in. And I find that this works really, really well to kind of just mattify everything, even it all out, take any excess oil out of the skin and just really bring it back to a nice, even tone. There we go. We've got to a, a, a kind of a central region there. Just pop the pad back in there. And then I'm just going to go at the contour with the NYX Matte Bronzer in the colour Light, which is 01, as it's the fairy shade. I'm just going to take a contour brush or so. Just work roughly on the cheeks. Now I'm going to be using a, a dark grey lipstick today. So I need to make sure that there's some warmth in my face. So I'm just bringing some of that bronze down into my face up into the hot eye hairlines covered just a little bit there lovely and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a bit of uh, blusher today from the Kiko range which is 
adorable pink and peach the actual um high blushes themselves are a kind of pale baby pink here and then you've got one that's a slightly more coral color so i'm just going to use the slightly more coral color because that's going to go a bit more with the outfit so i'm just using um this blusher brush number two from stargazer i'm just going to use that coral tone just going to put it over my cheekbones and this smells amazing think kind of chocolate bonbon range from Too Faced and you can see the really blendable soft colour that that's bringing on my cheeks and I'll really need that today to go with the rest of the range and then in terms of a highlight I'm going to use the Dior Skin Nude Air Luminizer um, in my latest shade which is 002 go you can't even see it it's so beautiful um it's like a really pale iridescent pink i'm just going to take the dior brush to apply it just run that along the length of the highlight and just rub that on my cheekbone and that is gorgeous on the other cheek tip of the nose cupid's bow and that should be fine Oh, that highlight is unreal. Love it. Okay, so moving on to eyes, I'm just going to pop a little bit of the Urban Decay primer on to both of the lids. Pat that into the eyelid. I always use my um, third finger along just because there's no big sweeping movements. It's kind of a gentle application and it's just right up and across the eyelid and just to sweep it under. And the same for the other eye. There we go. And then moving on to the eyes itself I'm going to start with putting a little bit of colour in the centre of my eye now as I say I'm going to wear a dark grey lipstick today so it's important for me that I put a bit of colour and a bit of warmth into my face so I'm using a Dior eyeshadow um, which is from the polka dots range 336 I love this eyeshadow colour palette it's got really crazy vibrant blues and then like a coral and a it's perfect for when I go away so I'm literally just going to uh, makeup brush wise probably use you I'm just going to use this shading brush from model zone just going to take a bit of that orange shade and pop that into the middle of the eye because I really want this bright colour to stand out so I'm just gonna pop that in the middle on both eyes and the thing that I find with um, shading the eyes is that it is quite a lot of layering obviously you learn specific techniques and even when your colour is really pigmented just like this one from Dior and it used a lot of Urban Decay shadows you'll do something, you'll blend it out, then you'll want to go back and apply more colour. And that's completely fine. The layering, if nothing else, helps to build the colour up. So next I'm going to use my new Manita eyeshadow palette, which smells amazing. Everything that I'm using today has a really nice smell to it. So the palette has a nice big mirror at the top, and then you've got uh eight shades on there i think i said nine yesterday which is really awkward um and i'm basically going to get some of the color and i'm going to put it into the corners of my eye so i'm probably going to use i feel like i want to use something different to what i used yesterday so i'm going to use this darkest shade which is midnight and i'm going to pop that right at the very outer edge of my eye it's much easier to use this one in front of me and then 
right in the middle corner just very slight because that is quite a dark brown I am not very dexterous today that's the second time I've uh, tr nearly dropped something well the first time I actually did drop it so I've now got a little bit of colour on the outer edges and a little bit in the middle and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tart brush that came with the man to set I'm going to use the colour hmm what have we got an orange could have used this colour pur and I'm just going to pop that next to it and this is going to build up a totally buildable blend okay so we've now got the three colours on there then we're going to use the other end of the brush I'm just going to dip that back into midnight really gently just a little bit of product on there starting at the outer edge and build that round and it's basically joining the dots so it's just moving the products on the outer edges to the middle and up now I think a lot of people put their transition colour on first I tend to put my darker colour on first and then transition out I think if you can make either work for you whichever you find easier I prefer to get a stronger colour on my eye first what I'm finding with these tar eyeshadows is they're kind of incredibly soft in the eyeshadow palette itself I'm literally putting this brush in which is crazy crazy soft and it's kind of already got rid of the word on this on the second use I'm just blending these out the same underneath the eye And the nice thing is, you can really see where you've got colour that's built up with the shadows. You've got this lovely dark brown colour. I'm just working that up the eye as I go, blending it out, working it up the eye. And, and honestly, you can never blend too much so I'm just going to take the uh, pale shade along here I'm just going to start working that in and the thing is if you have hooded eyes like mine it's better to avoid a shimmer on the actual lid so up and above the actual lid itself we can start to work in this paler shade and as we're working the other one up we can work this one down and then along the top of the eye itself just using that same makeup brush from Model Zone I'm just going to get a piece of a uh, bit of Meow which is this pale shade I'm just going to put that just along the brow bone And just working it along here where I quite often get dark colours of the eyes and just right in the corner of the eye. There we go. And then just pick up some more 
of this pale shade work that down the eye again and then just taking this paler highlight color and just working that right around the edge of the eyeshadow finishing the edges off there we go and then as I said before it's just handy to go back in with that first colour and just layer that back in over the top Yeah, particularly with mine that are hooded it's nice to give that colour on the lid that is exposed there we go. and I could probably blend that for about another three hours knowing me but I do need to just let it go and then I'm just going to use the Man Eater Mascara from Tarte Use this to apply. I'm just going to put that up and over my top lashes. Just gently coating the bottom set of lashes. Now I go through phases of putting mascara on the top and the bottom of my lashes but it's really working for me at the moment. And then finally I'm just going to put a grey lipstick on. Um, basically my outfit is mostly grey today with obviously the pops of colour that we've spoken about. So I'm using the NYX Liquid Spray Suede Lipstick. Um, in zero one which is stone fox um, I absolutely love this lipstick I find it much better than the lip lingerie colors that they have which are beautiful colors but are um, really drying this seems to last all day and doesn't really get very drying and I often get a lot of drying on my lips so I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this now I like to take the majority of the product off Dab a little bit on the end and, and crack on.
And as you probably just saw then, I like to fill the smallest part of my lips in first, and then I'll go back around and I'll fill them out where they need a little bit extra. And it should be a gradual process, you know, I hardly ever put the lipstick on and it looks perfect straight away. But I think that that is done. So I'm ready for the day. Thank you for watching and please follow me on Instagram at Abigail Flora.